This is a projection. But I'm telling you, if he goes to San Francisco, to Denver, to Carolina, I think with the coaching and talent around him in those spots, he can absolutely live up to the expectations I had for him coming out of USC, most especially your football team, where I am obsessed with Kyle Shanahan, and I think San Fran's a quarterback away from going back to the Super Bowl and winning it. I hear you. I just, from a talent level, I don't see him as possessing any, you know, exceptional talents in terms of athleticism, arm strength, accuracy, ability to read defenses. There's nothing, even a quarterback in a bad situation, you can still see, all right, this guy's an elite athlete. He is an elite, he is an elite arm. You know, he's an elite decision maker. And I just, I've seen none of that with Darnold, even despite him, you know, admittedly being in a bad situation and bad circumstance. Listen, Will, I hear you, right? I mean, I think you've seen it in glimpses. I think you've seen it in smaller doses. All of it. The arm, he's got a big league arm. You know, I, he can spread it around. He, he's, he's certainly a smart quarterback. I think he's a good athlete. I think he's a good leader. I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I, I would be a fool to tell you that he's played great. I still believe he can be great, and specifically for your team. So it's a projection, but I, I'm I'm pretty convinced in in my belief. And Will, I love this give and take, and appreciate the telephone call. Elliot in Jacksonville, our good friend, next on on sports. Uh, Arab Shabbat Shalom to you, my friend. How Shabbat are you? Shalom, Vien Shalom. Day early, Elliot, yeah. but we'll do it. I love it. I will do. We'll do it. Uh, I want to teeter totter on both the NBA and the NFL. Uh, venturing out of Miami, I know I'm in Jacksonville, but that's. That's my hometown on my home field. Um, first of all, I think the Dolphins, if Panay is there for number three, that's going to give him a dilemma because I think taking him and securing that offensive line, because I've always said you build a team from the inside out, that'll give you your anchor. You can move the other two guys back in. Now you got within you got five starters that are going to be within three years of the league, all young, all powerful, anchoring and growing together or do you trade back that's my question to you get out of number three trade back to six seven or eight and grab more draft picks to continue to build because you're now the youngest team in the nfl so that's my question to you number two is let me let me answer it quickly okay i'd love to see the miami dolphins make moves to make the playoffs I'm going to be open-minded. Now, I like the way you hit it, right? Trading back a little bit. Like, let's say Carolina wants to overpay to get the quarterback. Great. Right. Great. I, I think there's a method to the madness there. Yeah, I don't want to see a, a deep trade back or a far no. trade back. Because, look, no, if, you can, if you can still be in the top ten and still get, you know, Devontae Smith to team with, with Tua, well, we're we're having a, I love it. I already love it. But you need to find a stud receiver. You need to find a stud. You need your starting running back in this draft. By the way, you well, still I need believe- to you still need to improve your pass rush and your offensive line and and the Patriots just got that much better and the Bills are the Bills. And by the way, there's a realistic chance the Jets own the NFL draft. So to call this a pivotal period for the Miami Dolphins is not remotely hyperbole. And, Elliot, I voted Brian Flores Coach of the Year. I love Brian Flores. They're moving in the right direction. They better know that it's go time for this year right now. So I I, 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 ap- I appreciate and applaud your question, but they better – I my gut is stay at three. They trade back and get more picks and can still get a stud pass catcher. That I'm going to be on board with it. But don't get out of that top ten. No, it's not to get out of the top ten. I believe if they are going to make the trade, it's only the six, seven, or eight. You have four stud catchers available in the top ten. You're going to get. You're going to have an opportunity to get one of them at six, seven, or eight. And I do put Kyle Pitts as one of those stud receivers. Okay, he's a freak of nature. I agree. Coming out of the tight end, he he can play the slot or the tight end position. So I have no problem with him lining up as one of the stud receivers. Now, 
Secondarily, because I don't want to take up all my time real quick, what the heck is going on with the Miami Heat? You go 12-1, and one, and all of a sudden you can't put a ball in a basket and beat the worst of the teams in the NBA? There were some wild results in, in the association last night. I mean, games that made absolutely no sense in terms of predictability. I I don't know if teams last night were, were caught up in, in the trade deadline, but, you know, there, there were some wild, wild results over the last couple of days when you look at it in, in the NBA. I was stunned by the Magic and, and the Phoenix Suns. That one really got me. I I thought that was that was wild. So, listen, I I was I still can't believe I lost on the uh, <laughs> lock of the night. That that really confused me. Chad in California, our good friend. Next, Chad on sports. Sean, what's going on? My guy, Chad, bring it. So this might be the first time in, in the great 16-year history of Shine on Sports someone's called and been excited about JaVale McGee, Shine, but <laughs> I'm pumped up, and, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh, so the first time we acquired him years back, we needed him to be a, a, a big piece of, of a young team. You know, we were trying to compete with the Lakers back then. They had Bynum. We needed a big man. You know, JaVale, we were forcing him to play all these minutes. The asthma came into play. He had a good playoff series. But, you know, it just JaVale McGee is not the type of player you build a franchise around. Fast forward all these years, I think he's found himself. I think he's found an identity. And, and looking at this current Nuggets roster, we're terrible on defense in the paint. I mean, it's no secret. Jokic, who, who should be the MVP, he's not David Robinson. He, he's not out there. You know, he's not the Kimmy Mutombo. We need some presence down low. Paul Millsap, great defensive player, just not a big shot blocker. JaVale can come in and be that. And, and he doesn't have to play – 30 minutes a night he can play 15 to 18 minutes a night and bring that to to our defense we don't need him to score the ball we can use his athleticism and not only that shine that takes away another contender in the west or the east for that matter that would bring him in to compete against Jokic because we've seen what the Lakers did I think the Lakers did a fantastic job last year throwing McGee and Howard at Jokic and just banging them for for 48 minutes so I think the Nuggets avoid that by bringing them in and we get that defensive presence for 10, 15, 20 minutes a game that we desperately need down low. Chad, I, I love this take, and I think that it's a logical one. And, you know, we talked yesterday how Joker was the leader for, for the MVP, and I stand by that. And, you know, the Nuggets, in theory, should be ready to rock and roll, you know, as as a team that can win a championship. And, you know, right now they're not at the Utah level. Right now they're not at the Phoenix level. But after that, I think everything's up for grabs. And, you know, the way you guys played in the postseason last year was inspiring. So getting someone like McGee, I think, is a, a nice, solid piece. And he knows the deal and knows how to be a role player. So, And it's also an area of need. I, I love your take on, on McGee and your Nuggets. And there's one more move now. I mean, if we can make one more move. And we know the two players that were dialed in on Lonzo. But once again, he doesn't have to be the saving grace. He doesn't have to be the, the, the next, you know, whatever his father portrayed him to be coming out of college. He can just fit on the team. Or Aaron Gordon, who can bring that versatility, that 3-4 wing guy, who can bring the energy, who can light it up, you know, and just bring that, that chemistry to our team. So I think if we can figure out a way to make one of those moves, because Lonzo can fit in and handle the ball and put Murray off, off ball, and Murray can become more of a scorer, or Aaron Gordon can come in and bring that versatility, I think we're really cooking this time. Listen, Chad, you always bring unbelievable stuff to the table, and as always, appreciate the call. We'll check out the results of the Shine Box question, get the poll results, and take more of your outstanding telephone calls right after the hurricane and the Mad Dog Sports Radio Sports Fight. 